What's going on guys? So today we're talking about Brother Knives. This is a new company to me. Um, I only know these to be sold on Amazon. If you guys know of like a knife dealer that carries these, let everyone know down in the comment section below. Uh, but this is an Amazon find and it was not my find. I actually learned about these through my buddy Corey. So huge shout out to Corey. Um, he, uh, he got one of these off of Amazon, sent me a picture. He's like, dude, you got to check this out. And I'm like, yeah, that looks really awesome. You know, these are, these all average around $40. These are basically just, you know, kind of modern slip joints. Um, using a lot of carbon fiber, uh, VG10 blades on a lot of the models. All four of these have VG10 blades. I do have a couple more of these, uh, that have some other steels as well, a little bit cheaper, but I mean, this is like, it's just really cool. I mean, this is a total surprise to me. There's so many different brands out there I have no idea about because there's so many offshoots of these different Chinese companies and stuff, you know? So these are the two models that I actually used. The other two I haven't used yet. I'm actually looking to do uh, that one, move on to that next. But starting with the uh, the Cowfish, again, just wanted to kind of like get a, a full feel for the brand. This is obviously a locking knife. This has a little lock back on it. Um, then I switched over to this one, which is the Watchman. This is a 1508 CF. This sells for 42 bucks. Uh, this one is a traditional slip joint. A lot of them are slip joints, uh, but some of them do have the, the lock back option in case you do you know, prefer a lock. As far as the names, I think it's a little confusing because the, I want to say there's another model called the Watchman that doesn't look like this at all. So I wouldn't go by the names so much as the model numbers. All right, the model numbers are on all the, the blades here as well. But uh, this one is a slip joint as compared to the uh, the Cowfish, which is a little lockback. Um, very nice half stop on this. All right, very crisp opening. You can, can hear that, very uh, strong back spring on these. But you know, if you were happen to be uh, using this and you bump the back or whatever, it's not going to come down on your fingers. That half stop is a lifesaver, not only in you know comfortably opening and closing the knife, but uh, just for safety purposes. But uh, this has a nice, slender, very pointy Warncliffe blade here. All right, it's getting very sharp. Uh, the big thing I want to test is if the VG10 on these were really VG10. You know, for the price and because it's a, a Chinese company, that especially one that I'm not aware of or wasn't aware of before, uh, that was always questionable. You know, you can put whatever you want on the blade. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what it is. But after using these, I am, you know, convinced that it is VG10. All right, they have a fantastic performance. Uh, and that's like really the, the takeaway is, you know, they're a modern, modern style um, slip joints for the most part. Obviously, some are locking, um, you know, coming in with VG10 for a $40 price tag. That's what was the big sell for me. I just thought that was really cool. You know, it's a fantastic blade steel. These happen to be really nice uh, looking knives, but I wanted to make sure that they actually had good quality. And overall, after using both of these two, uh, I would honestly say these are definitely in the realm of like, you know, WR Case and Sons. Now for a case knife, there's obviously, they've been around so long, there's so many different models and, and so much variety there, but generally speaking, they're just more expensive. You'll, for these type knives, you'll spend anywhere from like 60 to 80 bucks, maybe a little bit more, depending on the handle material. Um, something from case with carbon fiber, again, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive. Uh, besides the carbon fiber that's available on a lot of these, you can see the one on the back here. This one is rocking some uh, micarta, which is very nice. It has some blue liners, totally different feel. On this one, this one has a, uh, uh, a nice like um you know brass uh and stainless steel pin gives a little decoration there and then they have some bone too they have yellow bone so a lot of these different models they come in both carbon fiber as well as this bone well i want to say yellow it's more like an off-white um but it has a very kind of like uh i don't know like a pale this one happens to look like the moon surface a little bit all right there's some uh, swirling going on there naturally in that bone but you can see again with the brass hardware the pins here all right it's just kind of cool it just looks nice. As far as the uh, the lockup on here, all right, you can see very crisp. Actually, put these next to each other, all right, so you can see the lockup. It's a little bit inconsistent. Whereas this one, I mean, the lockup, the actual. Let me let me not confuse everyone here. The lockup is perfect. There's no blade play in any of these knives at all. All right, not a, a single wiggle. But what I mean is, with the inconsistency, is you can see the one on the right there. Uh, it's not as crisp. Of a matchup okay between the back spring the, the actual lock itself and the back of the blade whereas this one is extremely impressive this is better quality right here than you're going to find on most case knives most case knives might look like this now at the end of the day neither one move there's no blade play but i'm just talking about just the actual fit and finish on these just really really impressive again a 40 dollars price tag that's that's something definitely worth uh 
uh, factory into here. All right, this one you see has a, a crimp bolster on here. All right, just super, super cool. Love the uh, the blade on here, very traditional clip point on this one. You can see this one's still covered in oil. I didn't get to use this yet. But uh, yeah, I mean, overall as a brand, I'm thoroughly impressed. And that's why I wanted to make this video. I'm not gonna go into like, you know, specific details about all these different knives. I just wanted to talk about just Brother as a brand. Uh, they all do come with a, um, a little pouch, which is really nice, like a, a canvas bag. This is actually a nice quality bag. Like there's some other, you know, cheaper knives or more affordable knives that come with like, you know, different types of, you know, canvasy type bags that are just like really loose, I don't know, just scratchy type feeling. This, I, it's hard to explain, this has a very tight weave. This is a very usable bag for all kinds of stuff. So uh, regardless of whether you want to keep your knife in there, this could be certainly useful. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, they average about 40 bucks or so. I've talked to maybe two other people about these. And since then, both of those people ended up buying them and uh, giving me feedback. They both liked them. They liked them a lot. But uh, again, huge shout out to Corey. He, he definitely hooked it up with letting me know about this brand overall. That I want to say they have like, you know, 15 or 20 different models. I really do hope that they, they branch out and I can, you know, find them in the future at some, uh, you know, some regular dealers, at least in the U.S., um, right now, like I said, the only one that I know, the only people that, that sell are Amazon. I didn't actually check eBay yet. I should have done that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's just uh, another option. If you're looking for that, you know, model, excuse me, modern, uh, traditional style of knife, you know, whether it's a, a slip joint or, um, you know, a locking knife, these are fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. I really beat the crap out of these. Now this one here, you can see, let me zoom in. Don't mind the glue and all that kind of stuff. But you can see that the model number on the bottom, I don't know, this. I'm, I'm assuming a serial number, you know, number 2391. I don't know if there's, you know, this is a 2391st made, or if that's a stock number or something for the company, who knows. But then you can see the design here on this one is a wonton. So uh, the person who designed this particular one, the, the cowfish. And if you look over here, this one does not have a designer on it. This one does not either. And this one is not either, but I do have at least one other model that has, you know, a different designer name on there. So just kind of cool little uh, credit where credit's due, you know, for the particular pattern. But uh, just really, really nice knives. Like I said, the, the biggest thing for me was to test these out. I just wanted to, I wanted to make sure that this was VG10. And again, you know, I'm not a metallurgist. This is just based on my personal experience comparing it to other knives with VG10, getting an idea of how long that edge lasts, how it sharpens up. You know, things like that, but, you know, I don't have, like, a lab here to, to go, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Nothing's ever 100%. Uh, there's plenty of uh, knives out there, you know, especially coming from uh, from China, from a variety of different brands, and uh, especially, like, off-brands, things you've never heard of before. And it might say, like, you know, S35VN, and it's not. It's just some random steel. Most people just won't know. You won't use your knife hard enough, or maybe you don't have enough experience. You know, you'd have to literally use it side by side with a very similar blade, the same shape, the same grinds, um, you know, to really get an idea of like, yeah, that's real or not. This is just, you know, generally speaking, just using these, they, they stay sharp for a very long time. Um, and from my personal experience, I do feel like it is, you know, genuine BG10. Now, there's other factors too. You can have, you know, let's say like D2. And D2 I'm using as an example because there's just so many companies out there that use D2, you know, both American companies, Chinese companies, you know, German companies, Italian, all over the place. Uh, although, you know, overseas is more N690 and stuff. But, uh, you know, in general, like D2 varies so much because of heat treatment. You know, one company does a, a fantastic heat treat on it. it. It just really stays sharp long. And another company, it might be genuine D2. It's really D2 steel. But you're going to find like, oh, it doesn't perform as well. So that you might think, well, that's fake. They just slapped that on there and it's probably like 440A or something. Not necessarily the case. There's a ton of factors. Also, again, blade geometry. You might have a Chinese made, you know, uh, VG10 knife like this, right? And then you have another VG10 knife that you're used to using. And you're like, well, this one performs a lot better. But that one might have a very lean edge, you know? Uh, it might literally uh, be able to be sharpened, you know, sharper. It just, it, it really, there's so many factors when you're talking about blade steels. And I talk to a lot of people about knives every single day. And a lot of people don't really know much about blade steel. They don't really care, you know, as long as a knife, like, you know, seems to stay sharp for a while. They're good with that, you know. Uh, but there is definitely a, uh, a smaller group of people within the knife community that obsess over blade steels. Uh, at the end of the day, I've, I've always said this, it doesn't matter if it's cheaper steel, more expensive steel, uh, you know, an average steel or a premium steel, as long as you can keep your, your knives sharp, that's what's important. 
you know, but obviously once you start paying, you know, some of the higher prices for knives, you do want that extra premium steel. You want that extra performance, you know. But uh, VG10, I think, is totally fine for, for most people. Um, you know, the common person who's not even really a knife person, VG10 will blow them out of the water. I remember when I first started using it back in the day, you know, a lot of knives were, you know, 440C. And VG10 was like, wow, this is really good stuff, you know. But now we're all spoiled with all kinds of different premium and exotic steels and stuff with ridiculous edge retention and, and capability. But, uh, but yeah, Brother Knives, it's definitely a, a blip on the map now for me. Uh, it's something I would definitely recommend if people are within a budget. If you're very much looking for, you know, some different sub joints or more traditional type designs, little pocket knives, something maybe a little classy, but it won't break the bank, you know, 40, 50 bucks. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's hard to beat, you know, $39 all day long for this one. Uh, I like the, I mean, it's hard to say which one I like the most. I, I, I just like the way this one looks a lot. I think that's a, a sexy looking knife. Um, you know, of course the sub joint kind of adds to that whole classic feel. However, you know, nice lock back, very sturdy, very usable knife, you know, very cool looking shield as well. I think it's just, it's just kind of neat. Obviously you can see this one doesn't have a shield at all. This one has a more traditional, you know, old school type uh, shield. The whole concept between modern and traditional is basically just having modern materials on a traditional knife. You know, getting a new look and a new feel and new performance out of a classic design. That's the whole point of it. Some people are into it, some people aren't. I totally get it. There's definitely purists that like their actual traditional knives. And this is like blasphemy to put carbon fiber on this. <laughs> you know, but hey, it is what it is. Different strokes for different folks. But anyway, just wanted to, uh, you know, bring this to everyone's attention. If you happen to, uh, uh, you know, discover Brother Knives, if you have a Brother Knife, let everyone know down in the comment section what you think of it. But uh, as soon as he showed me this one, I picked up the, uh, the Cowfish right away. And then after getting a couple different ones, I found that it's very consistent. You know, because that was my, my big worry was that like one would be total junk and one would be great. But that's not the case. Now, I did point out again, let me hold all four of these together. The, uh, the lockup on the locking knives are fantastic. But if you look at, again, fit and finish, it might be a little bit inconsistent in how that back spring whether it's a lock or the, the slip joint, how they meet up, okay? You can see, again, the cowfish uh, is just a little bit sloppier, although totally, you know, it's fine. It locks up fine. But um, you can see, like, these two on the right, super, super crisp. That line, that meet up, you want completely flat uh, faces, all right? So it meets up perfectly. But you can see there's no gaps in the scales or anything. Like, I'm really kind of disappointed. Uh, uh, you know, some case cutlery knives and stuff, you'll see all kinds of, you know, little gaps and and spaces here and there. Same thing like with these scales. If you look at, you know, real close by the bolsters here, perfect lineups. I mean, these are perfect matchups. That's all about the fit and finish, you know? So yeah, I mean, it's not gonna be a thousand percent compared to, let's say your custom uh, traditional or something like that, you know, but for 40 bucks, it is uh, definitely hard to beat. So that's all, just wanted to, uh, to mention that. So again, if you have any experience with this knife company, let everyone know down in the comment section what you think of yours. But I've been uh, thoroughly impressed thus far for the price. So I wanted to uh, touch upon it in this video. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys have an awesome day. And I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.